Hello everyone. Welcome to Sharad Chandra IS Academy. Welcome to the sessions of topics which are important with respect to names. Okay. In this particular lecture series, we will be talking about a uh, national language. So basically, national language is a topic which is there in use from past few months. Okay. And there can be a high chances of us getting a question in this year means with respect to the topic called national language. And uh, already we have I have told you that uh, whenever we were discussing any you know topics related to polity, it was always important to know about why it this topic is there in use. And second important thing is to understand what are the constitutional provisions that with respect to that particular topic, you know, is there any data which is related to it and the timeline of that particular topic and other important aspects of that particular topic. Okay. So it means when we were discussing a topic which is related to, you know, polity, these are all the things that you need to concentrate and we also need to uh, look into the top, uh, you know, uh, aspects like what are the arguments for, what are the arguments against and what is the way forward. And this is how we can actually structure a nice answer with respect to that particular topic, right? So coming to the national language, the reason why national language is there in news is because basically a PMF started something called, uh, you know, one nation, one ration card, one nation, you know, one language kind of thing. Okay. So that is the reason this particular slogans are, you know, uh, getting, uh, you know, more significance these days. And uh, experts are also of view that uh, there should be one nation and one language. And basically, there are also of view that to make Hindi as a lingo franca. What does this lingo franca mean? Lingo franca is nothing but linking language okay so some experts are of you a okay? few sections also demand that uh, you know uh, hindi should be used as a linking language instead of just making it as a national language then another important aspect with respect to news is that this year 2020 22 to 2032 is considered as a international decade of indigenous languages so that was the reason this particular topic is there in news. And coming to the data with respect to the national language. So uh, UN have said that, you know, uh, out of 6,000 languages, you know, estimated 6,000 languages, 43% of them are endangered. Okay, endangered means they are completely eroding from the use. And when it comes to the speakers of language in our country, basically there are uh, uh, Hindi is spoken more and then Bengali, then Marathi and Telugu. Okay, these are the four major languages which are spoken in our country. So basically it was actually felt that nations are formed as a national language as a identity. Okay, and basically the major identity to stick people is your language itself. So that is the reason language is always having a significant role. The debate with respect to national language have started earlier in your constitution assembly, constituent assembly debates itself. Okay. So basically uh, in constituent assembly also, most of the people felt that uh, many of the people, not most we can say, many of the people are of view that to have, you know, Hindi as a national language and few people opposed it as well. Do, so you just think in the lines of people who are belonging to the other, you know, other regions, for example, the southern states, which are having diverse cultures and languages, for them to, if we are making Hindi as a national language, it will become a difficult task and later you know people also felt that to make english as a language but that will that will that, that will you know uh, create a kind of you know enslavement to the to the british again so that was what is the reason we had debates with respect to what should be considered as a national language of the country and finally you know uh, the constituent assembly debates Finally, after uh, so much of debates and discussions, they came up with something called Munshi Iyengar formula. Okay, they came up with something called Munshi 
Iyengar formula. What does this say that basically English should be considered as a official language. So it is not an uh, you know national language. It's a official language. So as of now uh, in India we are not having any language as a national language. We are having English as a official language. And we have 22 more languages which were there in the age schedule. And coming to the Nehruvian era, okay, during the uh, du during the prime ministership of Nehru, Nehru basically imposed. Uh, he doesn't. He did not impose any language as a national language. It means you can say no language, no languages imposed during his era, okay, as a national language. And then coming to the Sastri uh, ji's policy, Sastri ji actually considered Hindi should be considered or Hindi should act as a alternative. Hindi should act as a alternative medium. Okay, that's what Sastri ji felt. And later, uh, we came up with, you know, many southern states actually, you know, protested, okay, against this particular idea. And finally, in 1968, in the education policy of the country, we have made something called three language policy in which we will be considering or we will be giving importance to the native languages of that particular state. And finally, uh, the presently in India, we have only official language. We are not having any national language. And recently, there were also some protests with respect to the national language well, thing in Jharkhand and all, with respect to language and all. So that is the reason this lang national language is again there in the news. And after knowing about the news thing, the data with respect to national language, now it is, our, you know, now it is time to understand, is there any constitutional provisions with respect to national languages okay so basically article 343 clause 1 of our constitution talks about hindi as a official language and 343 clause 2 talks about continuation of english as a official language so did you remember the munshi ayengar formula there i have told you that they have suggested to use english as a national language Further, they also said that parliament can extend this particular uh, English thing as an official language uh, later, okay, after 50 years. And then article 351 of your constitution also talks about development of Hindi language to improve this in the Hindi language, the Devanagari Lipi, etc, etc. And later, uh, in the 8th schedule of your constitution also, we have 22 languages. So basically, it was not 22 earlier, it was, you know, less than this number. But later in some amendments, we basically added few languages into the age schedule. Okay, so basically, we if we add a language into age schedule, the language will be getting some awards and all they will be, you know, separate, uh, separate uh, uh, concentration will be kept on those particular languages for the development of that languages and all. Okay. So, for example, in your uh, 71st amendment, we added Konkani, Maithili, Mani, sorry, Konkani, Manipuri, Nepali, all these things into 8th schedule. And then in your 92nd amendment, we added Bodo, Dogri, Santli and Maithili into your 8th schedule. Okay. So, it means uh, many states also now demanding to, you know, uh, many uh, uh, states in, in some states and all people are demanding to add their language into the age schedule you must have heard about uh, tulu language uh, tulu language demands to uh, to get added into age schedule and then okay and then in article 29 and 30 of our constitution also there is a protection uh, towards the minorities and it, the protection is given to linguistic minorities as well so these are all the provisions with respect to uh, constitution okay these are all the articles which are related to language on the constitution and then coming to the significance of language so what is what is so important to have a proper language so basically i have already mentioned earlier that language basically acts as a national identity okay it acts as a collective identity and then 
it also actually forges the social and cultural ties so that's what is an importance of your language and in your native language if you are learning something that was a different kind right so knowledge passes through the generations easily through the native language so that's the reason language is a very important source and then uh, people who are actually not having the knowledge of uh, english language and all okay they will be devoid of access with respect to the information for example if your medical reports are you know if your medical reports are not there in your local language if medical reports are just there in english and all it it becomes a difficult task for the people so that is the reason language is an important aspect okay to have a language which is common to everybody is a important aspect okay and then language is also a political identity okay here i'm talking not just about language i'm talking about how important it is to have a language to bind people okay so uh, later we have also had something called multilingual education based in mother tongue okay multilingual education okay these are all the significance with respect to the language that we are having so basically language is a major identity to stick the people guys for example you remember the bangladesh partition bangladesh is an example of the country formed with a language identity okay you can consider bangladesh as an example so to have lang with language as an identity that particular country are formed okay so in that way language may plays a major role to have a collective identity with respect to the people so this is what is the significance of language now coming to the national language so basically there are few advantages to have a national language so just a while ago we discussed about significance of language right socio cultural ties to pass the knowledge to have access to different information to have political identity we belong to same language etc such things will happen with respect to language so when it comes to the advantages of having a national language okay if we have a national language what is the advantage that we have we can prevent a regionalism you belong to the region which speaks x language you belong to region which speaks y language you belong to a region which speaks z language etc so it is a division or it is a regionalism which is an aspect created due to the different languages but if you have a national language it will prevent that particular regionalism yes or no so basically a national language will promote integration will promote togetherness unity so political reason behind having a national language the advantage political advantage is sorry advantage with respect to political sphere is that to promote integration what is an advantage with respect to cultural sphere you will not get influenced by the westernization okay if you are giving importance to your native language today most of the people cannot speak in their nat native language for more than 10 minutes continuously okay because of the influence of the western culture okay we don't even know some uh, you know words of particular things in your native language yes or no it means cultural uh, significance of that particular language is deteriorating so if you are having a national language will not get influenced by the westernization and then coming to the administrative uh, you know administrative uh, uh, advantages with respect to national language this will bring uniformity in government financing yes this will help to communicate people in a easier manner right so whenever if your prime minister is giving a speech in one particular language you are not able to understand it is always translated but something which is you know delivered in your own language or having a common language for the whole country will create a communi uh, will create the bridges of communication between the people okay and then nations are formed as national as a national language as a identity i told you right for example uh, bangladesh is a best example bangladesh okay and that particular nation state 
you know is a spectacular idea of social engineering these are the quotes that you can use in examination when there is an answer with respect to language and all and language is considered as a major identity to the to stick the people for all these reasons so we can say uh, it is advantageous you know it is uh, uh, these are all the arguments for the national language yes we are we do require a national language which will give all these advantages but there are also few challenges with respect to national language the first challenge is that soon after you bringing a national language you will definitely need to you know uh, you, you definitely need to face the protests from the other states for example today you are making you know some hindi as a national language there will be definite protests that happen in the southern states because southern states have different languages and they are very much you know uh, very much concerned with their language identity as well so it means politically it is a sensitive issue and it is also an electoral issue okay if you are touching the cultural aspects of any particular society it will definitely affect the government right so that is the reason there is a political challenge with respect to or political sensitivity with respect to uh, implement that is nothing but uh, ch- these are all the challenges for implementation you can consider these are all the challenges for implementation of national language you can just consider like that so just a few moments ago we talked about uh, advantage of having a national language okay there are also challenges as well first is political sensitivity second is it will endanger other languages see if you are having a habit of using one language as a national language definitely it will affect the other languages will forget those languages because we will be using one particular language in detail right and then there will be some socio psychological impact as well okay so and then the other problem is that utility of english so language of choice you know for jobs for globalization we are using english as a major language yes or no so it means there also we will, we will may, we may uh, you know face some issues if you are having a national language because you may not concentrate on other languages in which english will also be a part if you are not able to concentrate on languages which actually helps in globalization okay for globalization and interconnectedness we actually require in english right so it means job prospects will be affected and then we might uh, you know this linguistic divide may lead to digital divide as well yes or no for example you are having hindi as a national language and you are not concentrating on those languages which will help in globalization say for example english so it means this linguistic divide will further may lead to something called digital divide as well okay these are all the challenges with respect to the make with respect to the implementation of national language so so far we actually discussed about all the aspects which are related to national language right so we talked about why national language is there in news right let me just highlight the part so basically we just understood why national language is there in the news the data which is nothing but 43% of you know 6000 languages are endangered and then we talked about timeline for example we talked about constituent assembly debate nehru's policy shastri ji's policy three language policy and now we were not having any official language then we also talked about language and its significance and the constitutional provisions and why national language we need okay so we have arguments for arguments against and why hindi is you know considered as a national language okay so finally we will be talking why hindi should be used so basically the reason behind using hindi as a national language is that the speakers of hindi are of more in number okay basically hindi is the language which is more spoken and later it is bengali okay and then it is marathi and then it is telugu okay so the reason being hindi having you know more uh, more number of speakers okay 
so basically uh, there is a constitutional directive as well for development of language hindi so that was the reason we actually uh, uh, you know talk about more uh, with respect to hindi as a national language now if you uh, if you try and understand the advantages of national language also you will understand how politically it is important to have to promote integrity and all and now finally if you go through the initiatives okay what are all the initiative that we having with respect to language the first thing is national uh, education policy of 2020 talks about three language policy okay and then in techno companies as well there is you know there was a culture of promoting the local languages for example your google facebook etc is promoting local languages and we have another initiative called ek bharat and ek bharat shreshth bharat right ek bharat shreshth bharat and that also it is important to promote you know languages so those are all the initiatives now coming to the way forward what can be done how this problem of national language can be tackled the only solution with respect to this is that multilingualism and intercultural communication are growing today yes or no so having a multilingual model it means you should not have only single language as a national language instead we can have multilingual model the example of those countries which have multilingual model and now they are you know developing are your singapore and also switzerland these are the countries which are not having a national language instead they are having a multilingual model wherein they will be using different you know languages in order to promote their culture and all so it means when you are not bringing single language as a national language obviously people will not get affected right they will definitely promote this particular idea and the reason behind introducing national language is to promote integrity and further it will lead to development yes so that is the reason we were talking about national language but the singapore and switzerland stands as an example for those countries that have good economy with multilingual model yes or no you consider you know singapore and switzerland these are having good economy as well okay they are having good economy with multi lingual model okay so that's what is the reason which actually you know uh, tells uh, uh, you, that's what is an example of the countries which are having multi multilingual models and all and still they are developing okay it means their uh, the idea of national language basically favors unity but still there were few you know issues with respect to national language because it will may, it may lead to the divisions within the people so if you are making hindi as a national language south southern people will start protesting if you are making some southern state language as a national language then obviously people who are you know hindi speaking people are more obviously and they will start protesting it means it's a very sensitive issue so basically national language is a both a unifying factor and it also acts as a dividing factor so finally how we need to understand this issue is that we are having some advantages with respect to national language okay we are having some points for for example promotes regionalism sorry promotes integration prevents regionalism okay people will not be influenced by westernization and all but there are many other Uh, you know negative impacts as well it will affect the federalism yes or no because the concerns of there the it it is a state's concern if you are bringing in a national language so many states protest against the idea of national language so finally what we can do is that according to some scholars views and all instead of one language we can have a hybrid model okay so coming to the you know uh, if we consider way forward so basically one is multilingual model we can use and the other is what we were actually trying to implement now okay in your national education policy this is one way forward you can write the second way forward is to have a hybrid model what is this hybrid model it is nothing but the three language policy okay and promoting multilingualism 
and intercultural communication that's what is one thing so going for national language you know translation missions okay going for national language translation mission, missions or adopting three language form line letter and spirit okay these are all the way forwards that we can have okay this is the whole topic which is related to your national language so in a whole in a picture as a whole if you consider so national language is a issue which was there in news so we need to understand the news the data the timeline constitution significance advantages of national language challenges and finally way forward okay thanks lot everyone for attending the session and we'll meet again with a new topic